Yo, what up folks, TrevTG here, and World of Eldraine is almost here. We've got the full set now, including the extra kind of card list that's being added, which does bring a couple of things across into Explorer that are in Pioneer, like they're, they're just being put onto Arena uh, as part of the set. And so, pretty exciting stuff. Gonna have to go through and talk about basically the cards I'm most excited for, and the things I'm gonna make a impact on the format, or potentially can make an impact on the format. Um, but yeah, we're going to kick things off in white with Blind Obedience. Uh, one of the new cards kind of on the alternate list, or alternate sheet, I guess it's called. Um, one on a white for an enchantment. Artifacts and creatures your opponent's control ends up battlefield tapped. And then it has Extort on it, which means whenever you cast a spell, you can pay white or black. And if you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain that much life. Uh, it triggers once, so you can only do it once. You can't, like put all your mana into it but pretty cool effect normally he plays as a sideboard card it's just stuff versus aggro or occasionally you can like kind of slow things down with like grease fang and that kind of thing um but does occasionally see some play in the format so it's a nice one to get onto arena the other thing that i wanted to shout out is that on this sheet are all the ley lines you'll open some of them if you've not got them already they're mostly all good ley line science to lay on the void probably the two big ones um but hey yeah grab those the other thing about that actually that i want to talk about is that they are adding extra duplicate protection they announced that they haven't told us from what i understand exactly what it is yet and or when it'll actually be added but hopefully we with a set because one of the problems with all these alternate sheets is that we're like hardened scales is getting your pencil arena all the ley lines a bunch of other cards are actually getting you know we're going to open more duplicates of them so it would be a bit good to get that sooner rather than later but one of the most exciting white cards in the set is a moon shaker cavalry uh, the white Crater Hoof Behemoth, if you will, this one is actually in the actual set, not the one sheet, but five white, 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 Spirit Knight, six, six, with flying, when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain flying, and get plus X, plus X, to end a turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. So where Crater Hoof is like, buff your team, give them trample, Moonshaker Cavalry does, does the same kind of thing, where you buff your team and give them flying, so you give them more evasion, you can fly over the top, da 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 A bunch of different places could crop up, obviously places where you've got, because we don't actually have Crater Hoof Behemoth in Pioneer Explorer, so hey, pretty cool, pretty cool. A bunch of places where it could crop up, especially where you can tutor for it, we've got Court According, they've been working on a few different like Eldritch Evolution lists, there's some other pretty nuts things you could do with it, very very exciting con. Excited to see where it goes. A little bit more tame, maybe. Regal Bonicorn. Uh, one and a white. Regal Bonicorn's power and toughness are each equal to the number of non-land permanents you control. Bit of a niche one. A lot of the time these effects are like, oh, it's big, like, you know, like power equal to, and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. Those effects are quite slow. Generally more expensive than this, but counting a non-land permanent is super, super powerful. We've seen things with like the Hogak deck where they're just swarming the board with Ornithopters and then like Thraben Inspector, Clues, similarly like Vault Out of Epicure, Blood Tokens. You can put a lot of non-land permanents on the battlefield very, very quickly. Uh, and so you can easily be playing like Regal Bonifon on like turn two or turn three for like, it's like a five, five, um, which is, Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Lots of potential there. Stroke of Midnight. Two and a white, instant, destroy token on land permanent. Its controller creates a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Kind of like a beast with an effect, but a 1-1 one, one is a lot worse than a 3-3. Three, three. Um, it is not land permanent, so it doesn't blow up lands. That That is make it a bit more balanced, I guess. Just being able to, hey. The, the, the downside of beast within a land is you give them a 3-3. Three, three. You're going to give them a 1-1, one, one, probably not that great. But does answer pretty much everything, um, which is super, super nice. We have a lot of really good white removal. A lot of the time it gets splashed around. Uh, see Leyland Binding, I guess that one's designed to be. But hey, Stroke of Midnight, pretty interesting. See what it does. Where Fox Bodyguard. One white, white. Elf Fox Knight, absolutely amazing creature typing. So it's a 2-2 two -two with Flash. When into the battlefield, exile up to one other target, non-fox creature, until where fox bodyguard leaves the battlefield. It's like a, a fiend hunter, banisher priest um, style effect. That has flash, which is super, super powerful. You can also sacrifice it to gain life. Um, this is templated like the newer versions of these, um, where you can't like sacrifice it with a trigger on the stack. This ability of the flash, really, really nice. Doesn't necessarily have relevant than Hedris types, isn't a human. We see, like, for, like, Brutal Cathar. Similarly, not a spirit with the side apparition. But, hey, maybe the flash makes it more viable. Leading us into blue cards, kicking things off with Chancellor of Tales. Uh, I don't really make a habit of putting, like, four mana two threes into, like, cards I'm one of even constructed. However, this one is quite exciting. Three and a blue for a two three with flying, but whenever you cast an adventure spell, you may copy it. You may choose new cards for the copy. We've seen the, like, Lucky Clover type stuff, um, not really since the format really started, but 
it does have a lot of potential and when you start getting more of those kind of copy the adventure um, spell effects especially when we're printing it when we're adding in a bunch of new adventure spells which we'll get to here hey there's some potential it is the four mana two three it's very slow like hey it's very fragile so maybe not good enough but i just want to hedge and say we might even see some normal we might see some like lucky clover stuff anyway oop this is in the wrong spot but we're gonna carry on anyway uh fairy fencing Kind of a bunch of fairy cards in this set. There are a couple of different like creature type that are getting some buffs, but fairy's an interesting one. Uh, X and a black target creature gets minus X minus X turn a turn. That creature gets an additional minus three minus three if you control a fairy. You do need to control a fairy um, when you cast it, and no, it is when you cast it. So if they kill the fairy in response, it still gets the minus three minus three. In fairies, really efficient removal spell. Black for minus three minus three, really, really good. If there's enough good fairies for there to be a decent fairy deck. I suppose he's in play. Won't see play anywhere else, I don't think. Back into blue. Yeah. With As Foretold. This is another card that's coming over across on the kind of like second alternate sheet. And it is a pretty sweet one. We've seen it in a modern with all the like zero mana suspend cards. There are less shenanigans than you can do in Pioneer and Explorer. But there are still some shenanigans. So if you're not familiar, two in a blue enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on as per told. Once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast with mana value X or less. Rex has a number of time counters on it. In modern, you would have gone as per told and then you'll cast a zero mana spell. So something like living end. But here you're doing much more fair things. When you play it, you can cast a zero mana spell. The next turn, a one mana spell, two mana, three mana. But it is free. And so it's an interesting one. Farsight Ritual. An interesting take on kind of like a, you know, memory delusions, like look at the top four cards, pick two, and then you get like the flashback. However, Farsight Ritual, two blue blue, instant. Bargain, which is a mechanic, this is the first kind of we're kind of seeing this. You may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or tokens you cast a spell, and you get like a bonus effect. So here, look at the top four cards of your library. If you bargained, look at the top eight instead, then you get to put two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom. Four mana, look at the top eight potentially, put into your hand. Obviously, very, very strong. So I expect Fast Light Ritual to see some play. Kind of depending on if there's like enough things lying around, like artifacts, enchantments, or tokens in the decks that want to play this. Something like Control, maybe you don't. First of our new adventure cards, pick Lock Prancer. One and a blue for a one, three. However, the instant here, mill four cards, put an instant sorcery or fairy card from the mill cards into your hand. Interesting. Getting to look for like a dig for like an instant sorcery. That is like not that far away from impulse as like a bonus effect and then just work one of two ways either you have like a creature that is like fairly efficient and you're putting this extra thing that you get onto it or you have a pretty good spell where the bonus is the creature normally one of them is way better than the other one is here in this case the instant is like the better half the, the two mana one three flying vigilance is just some nice upside if there's a fairies deck maybe it gets played around there shouts out talking about fairies sleep cursed fairy is one of the more interesting cards in the set because it is a one mana three three with flying and ward two which means it's not dying early uh however it enters the battlefield with three stun counters on it so it's going to come into play tapped and then remo remain tapped for the first three turns that it would untap which is fairly costly it also makes it a pretty terrible top deck however it has this other ability one in the blue untap sleep cursed fairy which makes it less of a bad top deck if you draw on like turn nine, you can play it for one mana, untap for two mana, and you're okay. Bear in mind that if you attack with it and it's still got the stun counters on, it will then get stunned again. Potentially really, really powerful card. One mana, three, three, very, very good. You can just play it on turn one, untap it on turn two. With that being said, it's not really impacting the battlefield a turn early in the game. If you want a fairy to sit around and play and trigger other stuff, it's a pretty good one. Having ward two protects it a decent amount. It means that you're not just going to get it Bonecrusher Giant. Well, it can't be Bonecrusher Giant. It means it's not just going to get like Fatal Push straight away. Really hard card to evaluate. I'm not sure how good it will be. Is it going to make or break the Fairy Shell? Possibly, but it probably depends a little bit more on how good the other payoffs are. The one mana removal spell we saw before, black for minus three, minus three, is pretty strong. Kills Grease Fang, all that good stuff I go on about a lot in the video when I'm doing that text and things. But hey, we will see. We will see. Pretty exciting though. A sleight of hand reprint here. Uh, so blue, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the other on the bottom of your library. It is a sorcery, not an instant, which probably makes it worse than opt and consider. It is not the same effect. The cool thing about sleight of hand is that you get to look at both cards before you decide whether you want to scry or not. So with opt and consider, you look at the top card just to get to see one, and you have to decide when you want to bend it. With sleight of hand, you get to look at the top two, which potentially makes it better if you're doing like combo things that don't involve the graveyard. If you're doing combo things that involve the graveyard, you probably want to consider. If you're doing combo things, like things like creativity, then then you maybe want this over one of those cards to get to actually see the second one. Okay, where you want to draw it. Uh, it's just one. 
note that if you want both cards in the end, sleight of hand is worse. We'll see. We'll definitely crop up in some places. We'll see exactly where, which decks prefer what, but it is one to be aware of. Spell Stutter. Obviously a call out to Spell Stutter Sprite, which I'm sa sad to say we did not get in, 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 the, in the set. I would love that, but it is a pretty busted magic card in general. Uh, a one and a blue instant counter target spell unless the controller pays two. Plus additional one for each fairy you control. At its base level, two mana counter unless they pay two is early game very, very good. We've obviously seen mate disappear, that kind of thing do really well. The upside, hey, if you've got fairies about, it costs more. Awesome. Amazing counter spell. Expect to see, this, this, to see a decent amount of play. Almost potentially whether there is a fairy deck or not. Obviously, mate disappear has some extra upside, but if you're playing a few fairies, spell stutter might just be better. Italian's Messenger, another fairy card, and we're gonna, we're, there are a few fairy cards that we're going to go through. So two and a blue for one three, not very great stats, but does dodge like Bungshire Giant, dodge dodge, at least the front half of Fatal Push. One three of flying, whenever you attack with one or more fairies, you draw a card and then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, you put a possible small counter on target fairy you control. Is a slow effect, and you're not, it's not a really big buff, means I think this is pretty bad. The one exception being is that if you have cards that you want in your graveyard, Say, for example, like if we saw like a fairy version of Grease Fang, like fairy es Esper Fairy Grease Fang, then hey, cool effect, but but probably probably not great. Ooh, cards I'm excited about. Virtue of Knowledge. Four in a blue enchantment. If a permanent enters the battlefield, causes an triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. The kind of panharmonican style effect here, however, it's an enchantment, sure, but it is an adventure. And so Vantress Visions is a one in a blue instant to copy target activated or trade ability you control you may choose new targets for the copy this is the first of this kind of cycle of enchantments that we're looking at and it is one of the ones i'm more excited about the four in a blue double double triggers like hey you got like alish on that kind of thing it's expensive what you're doing however the additional upside of having the the adventures to go on could be amazing imagine like say you're playing uh enigmatic fires and you're like oh i'm gonna sacrifice my fable the passage and then you're like, oh yeah, actually, I'll just like get two lands. Pretty cool. I'll get a couple of things. It's just the potential for this one in particular, where you're copying abilities. The upside is super, super high. If the like, sometimes you won't be able to use it, and that's like the hey, the failure rate is it does nothing, and it's a virtue of knowledge. You don't have anything you want to copy, or you don't have the mana to copy stuff, um, and you're just gonna play it. It's fair half, in which case it's a little slow. But the like huge upside of the adventure half here, copying something early and then being able to come down later to influence the game. And just like take over the game with this ability in play uh, is is huge. So virtual knowledge is one of my I think my probably in my like top five cards of the set. It might be in my top two at least as far as things I'm excited to play with. Actually no, virtual knowledge is the card I'm most excited to play with. I think that's the last of the blue cards into the black now with beseech the mirror. One black 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 sorcery has a bargain. So again, if you sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token, you get a bonus. Search your library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. If the spell was bargained, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. If that spell's mana value is four or less, put the exile card into your hand if it wasn't cast this way. So, one black, 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 tutor, or one black, 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 tutor for something that costs four or less. If you sacrifice an advanced enchantment or token, cast it for free. Uh, this card does just make me really miss that we don't have Bring to Light in the format. Wizards, please please fix that as soon as possible. But the like tutor ability here, just be able to like go grab something, kind of play like a toolbox strategy. We're like, okay, especially because it's just a spell. It can be anything. You need to be able to cast it, it can't be a land. Um, but super, super powerful. You can't like go get Tibble. And sorry, you can't go get Tibble and cast the seven mana half because it checks the card you're trying to cast is for mana five four or less. Um, but that would be really cool. There's a bunch of other things you can tutor for, whether that's like a Wrath, you can go tutor for Shouldred, you can do all kinds of things, all dependent on if you're able to trigger this like bargain ability. So if there's enough things that you can play early on where you're like, yeah, I can put like something in so I can sacrifice an artifact to channel a token, then really, really strong. Another fairy with Fairy a Dream Thief. Black for a 1-1 with flying. When Fairy Dream Thief enters the battlefield, surveil 1. From the top card of your library, you can put it into your graveyard. Do a black, exile, Fairy Dream Thief from your graveyard. You draw a card and lose one life. This is another one where, like, hey, if you have a Fairies Matter deck, be really solid. Uh, it's all matter one with flying, with some upside. This availability is pretty nice. If there is a Fairy deck around, pretty solid amount. 
for, for any solid chance. Like Surveyor 1 is a, a decent ability, it's a bit like scrying. The uh, ability to like draw again from your graveyard is pretty nice, but again, it's like if there's enough good payoffs for having fairies in play, Green Thief, kind of nice. Lich Knight Conquest. Four in a black sorcery. Sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens. Return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is like an all-in build around me card. Very, very cool. Is like a living death style effect for you, but you need to sacrifice a bunch of stuff that you have in play. So artifacts, enchantments, and tokens. If there are artifacts, enchantments, or tokens that you can play that mill you to then put creatures that you want to bring back from your graveyard, th this is a pretty cool idea for a deck. There are some effects where like either when you discard this card and make an artifact, there's, a, there's the ox or is it a cow that does that? Um, there are a bunch of kind of like artifacts that can potentially mill a player. I wonder, I think there's something you could do with this. I don't know if it'll be consistent or good enough. The problem is that it loses to a counter spell, right? That's, that's part of the issue. But there's some potential here. And that brings us to the rats. So fairies is one creature type we're getting a bunch of new cards for, where they could get pushed into constructive playability. The other one is rats. And now I've already played a bit of rats in Explorer on Arena, and it is already like a, 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 a an okay tier two deck. The core of that is around Caramonix the Rat King, which if you're not familiar is a one black black for a three three Phyrexian rat, but the idea is that when it enters the battlefield you look at the top five cards and reveal any number of rats from among them put them into your hand. This in combination with the rat colony to be able to just basically create a bunch of creatures that get bigger for the number of rats you control is a really powerful engine and is not that far away from constructive playability. But there are a number of good rats cards that we're getting in the set that are pretty powerful. So the Lord's Gate is Butcher. Two and a black for a 2 3. <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Create a 1 1 rat creature token with this creature can't block. Or you may sacrifice another creature if you do scry 2 draw a card. Or creatures you control gain menace until end of time. And the huge ability here is the last one creatures you control gain menace. Rat Colony is a 2 mana 2 1. Gets plus one plus zero for each other rat you control, and you can have any number of them in your deck. Normally, the way the rat deck plays is that you swarm the board with rat colonies, and then you try and turn them sideways to kill your opponent. However, they don't have evasion or anything like that. The ability to give them all the menace is really, really strong. And so, Lord's Gate's Butcher, I'm actually super, super excited about. Don't sleep on the rats. Oh, also, it's like it's a chef in it, so it's like rat too. Speaking of Lord Skitter. The, the 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 rat king himself, Lord Skitter Sewer King, two and a black for a three three a legendary creature rat noble. Whenever another rat enters the battlefield, you control X up to one target card from opponent's graveyard. Not like a hugely powerful ability, but it's a really neat one to have on a creature. Neat. But at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a one one rat creature token with this creature can't block. A <laughs> rattle master, if you will, sort of. It goes wide with rats. It's got some, a neat utility ability, which like is good versus some graveyard decks. Not the most exciting rat card in the set, but is one that you maybe play as a one of or something like that. I may be underrating the ability here to keep making pumping rats out, but hey, given time, you get rats. These bump all your rat colonies. It's all it's all good. Ooh, Rankle's Prank. Two black black sorcery. Choose one or more. I actually missed the or more bit when I was initially reading this, but each player discards two cards. Each player loses four life. Each player sacrifices two creatures. A ton of stuff going on here. Um, one or more is, is actually pretty well, because you can like, just just nuke everything. Either, maybe you're playing Waste Knot and you want to discard cards out of your opponent's hand. Maybe you're playing, uh, maybe you're doing shotgun things, you want to like, pressure their life total as well. Each player sacrifices two creatures is a fact that is actually pretty strong. Generally, you'll play this card in a deck with very few creatures on your own side, so you'll be able to play this to just like, nuke two of your opponent's creatures. Pretty good that way. A lot of versatility. There's a lot of four drops for mono black control. This is another one. Maybe they can't play all of them. Maybe it's okay. We'll see how it actually works out. But a lot of potential here. Ooh, Vampiric Rites. This is a card that is coming over. It was printed originally in Battle for Zendikar. Uh, but it's a black enchantment for a black. Uh, one black sacrifice a creature. You gain a life draw a card. Very innocuous. It just sits in play as a sacrifice outlet. But fortunately, as an enchantment, it can't just be removed by creature removal. The upside, being able to all, like, gain life and draw a card is pretty good. I just want to keep an eye on I like I like a lot of the different sacrifice decks. There's a ton of different variations there. But, hey, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Virtue of Persistence. So we saw the blue one. This is the black virtue. It is seven mana for the the, 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 the big side. It's the chairman that says, at the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature from graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Obviously, huge, really, really powerful. The downside being it costs seven mana. The upside, though, one the black for Lockthwain Scorn, target creature gets minus three minus three until the turn, you gain two life. Kill something, gain some life, awesome. For two mana, it is a sorcery, which means it doesn't kill things like Grease Bag. Uh, well, in time for it to be relevant. But 
Really, really good removal spell of Blessed Aggro. Obviously, be able to get that life back as well. And then seven mana is a bit of a stretch. So I'm really curious to see if we actually see some actual Black Devotion decks. There's a lot of mono black mid range stuff going on, but most of that isn't playing into like Nyctos or anything. You really need to be taking advantage of the Nyctos, or maybe you see something like Black Green Ramp where you're taking advantage of this. But really, really powerful card again. Into red cards with Emberith Veteran. Red for a 2 1, but has this one sacrifice ability to create a young hero roll token attached to another creature. Uh, and that basically gives that creature, when it attacks, if toughness is 3 or less, put a counter on it. Pretty powerful effect. It's kind of neat. The thing here, really, is this one toughness. It is a knight as well, which and a human, which are both relevant creature types. There's maybe enough support for human knights specifically. However, for like normal mono red decks, the way that things have trended is to actually just not play any one toughness creatures at all. Uh, you play Monastery, Swift Spear, Soul Scar, Mage, Mono, and then just like don't have anything that gets like killed by like a, a one damage spell. So I don't think it's good in like traditional mono red. However, in like red white humans or red white knights, which there's actually a lot of support for in Pioneer Explorer, could be really strong. Oh, another card that's kind of on the alternate sheet here, and that is Impact Tremors. So one on a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield and you control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. That obviously stacks if you've got multiples in play, if you're putting a lot of stuff into the battlefield, or if you have a way to just like Grinning Ingus to just like pick up a card play it again. Just keep triggering against the battlefield effects. Obviously that just kill your opponent too. Um, and so Impact Tremors is a pretty interesting card and a bit of a fan favorite, I think. Uh, which brings us to the Red Virtue. Virtue of Courage. Three red, red enchantment. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, you may exile that many cards from the top of your library. You may play those cards this time. Okay, really powerful effect. Obviously this is non-combat damage. This means like a burn spell, something like a lightning strike, something like a shock, that kind of thing. Exile that many cards, and it's at cards equal to the amount of damage. So, like, hey, lightning striking, like the top three cards. Really, really strong. Especially, like, hey, if you go into five mana in a burn deck, you're probably super, super flooded, which is kind of made up for by having two halves. And so, it all comes down to if Emperor's Blaze is good enough to play. Two mana, instant, two damage to any target, which is okay, but a little, like, it's it's like a stomp, isn't it? It's, it's not quite, like, on rate. The question is like, is there a pure enough burn deck that wants a little bit of an inefficient burn spell, but with the massive upside of virtue of courage, five mana so much, and you need for it to like be able to untap with it to then start using it as well. So I want to shout out virtue of courage, but I'm less confident in this one. Which brings us to green cards with Blossoming Tortoise. Two green green for a 3-3. When a Blossoming Tortoise enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards that return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Activated abilities and lands you control cost one less to activate and land creatures you control get plus one plus one. There's a lot going on here. It's a bit niche. Four mana for 3-3 three, three is a little much, but enter the battlefield or attack. So when it enters the battlefield, you get the ability. So regardless of whether it lives or not, you're going to get the trick here. Mill three cards, return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, if you get attack, you get to do it again. Look, it, it's it's basically a primeval titan, primeval tortoise. I'm gonna coin that. That's mine now. Uh, someone's already said it, I'm sure. But hey, there are a few different things where lands matter in the format. They're all a little too niche. The ability to, like make the activated abilities of lands cheaper is really, really powerful. Being able to like field of the dead for like one mana, being able to like reduce mana on like layer of the hydra. There's a few other things as well where it's actually a really powerful ability. The thing here is, is like, is there enough? Is there powerful enough land things to be doing? Dread Presence is whenever a swamp enters the battlefield, choose one, either draw a card, lose a life, or deal two to any target. You can use that in conjunction with things like, oh, well, we, we don't actually have Urborg on Arena, but in Pioneer you can use Urborg. Hopefully we'll get that onto Arena soon. Again, please watch see soon, please. Um, there are a couple of other things. You can play Dried of the Elysian Grove to like give all your land types and like really pop off doing these things. It's just a case of is there enough things in the shell to make it work without using too many slots to dilute your deck so that you're like able to do the thing you're trying to do whilst still being able to compete in the format with this pace of other stuff. Hey, I could get Grease Fang on turn three or pseudo turn three. Thunderous debut. Thinking about triggering bargain. Sorry, the spell is eight mana. It's an eight mana sorcery, six green green. Look at the top 20 cards of your library. That's a lot of cards. Reveal up to two creature cards from among them. If it was bargained, put the real cards onto the battlefield, otherwise put them into your hand. So obviously we try to bargain this and put two creature cards from the top 20 into play. They don't get cast, they go onto the battlefield. And then it's like, okay, what are we doing with it? There's a ton of potential here. Either things like that give haste, and there's obviously a really powerful end to the battlefield effects, things like Attraxa. Ulamog without the castry is not so good, but there are some other pretty powerful things you've been doing. 
Like in theory, like you could get like Ward, Spine Worm, Xenagos, but you're paying eight mana. Like obviously it's a pretty big cost. You've got to be doing something that absolutely defensively wins you the game, which is the, the trouble really is that it's a top 20 card. It's not like you get to through your entire library. It's something pretty powerful. Eight mana is a lot. If you have a way to cast the sorcery from your library or reduce the cost of it by a lot, maybe there's enough going on. And we get to the green virtue, which is virtue of strength. So five green, green, if you tap on basic land for mana, produces three times as much of that mana instead it is basic land which limits this quite a bit uh probably is important for having like it's a really three times ma the mana is is very very good uh and also like somewhat, obviously doesn't work for like nykthos geez that would be miserable um but again the key is always with the adventure Garenbury Gross is green for a turn target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. Interesting. And then later on you get to do the hey seven mana thing. And get to like pop off tapping for loads of basic land of mana. Um how good is Garen Briggs growth? Rebuying a creature or land is interesting, but it's not a fact you want to have like loads of copies of. You can kind of pop off with Fable Passage, or one of the like Outlook style lands. But it's not fantastic. You'd have to be doing something pretty specific here. Keep an eye on it but not not like a clear staple or anything and we get into multicolored and we're going to start off with an adventure card and that is balloona ground squall it, it itself is green blue red for a 4-4 with trample permanent spells you cast that have an adventure cost one less to cast and uh, this means you're casting the actual like spell the, the permanent half of it so like casting the actual bunker right and not casting the stomp so it doesn't reduce the spell cost reduces the permanent cost but it is a really, really powerful effect. It's obviously under-costed as a 3-mana 4-4, and it has an adventure, which we've not talked about yet. So Th Seek Thrills is 2, and then Team of Colors, an instant. Mill 7 cards. Ooh, already have me excited. Then put all cards that have an adventure from among the mill cards into your hand. This, like, plays the, like, role of the old, like, Escape to the Wilds, where you cast that, like, get a bunch of card advantage. Here, the cards go into your graveyard as well, which is even more powerful, potentially. Um, so if you've got things to return them, you can really pop off. Maybe with the virtue we just talked about, actually, you're going to recur some stuff. And then obviously you're finding basics. You've got the three mana spell that like goes and finds basic lands for your library to get enough basics to play. You get to like go off a loads of mana. Okay. We're cooking, we're cooking. There's definitely potential for something here. Again, I've got an adventure deck that I'm playing with this week, so definitely check that video out. Next adventure though, Cruel Somnophage. One and a black. Parent toughness equal to number of creature cards in all graveyards has this can't wake up ability one the blue target player mills four cards and so this fits into maybe my favorite deck in pioneer explorer and that is dredge this is a really powerful effect like one the black for this power of equal to the number of creature cards in the graveyard's body does get huge and the sorcery half can't wake up one the blue target player mills four cards is like good enough to be like an okay enabler when you have this other effect staple to it i've played some lurgoif it's not that great I think this is much better. My problem really is it doesn't fix problems the deck has at the minute. And so I think this is really, really powerful. I definitely play it, but I don't know if it's going to make Dredge a contender. The only thing that I really do that is Grease Fan getting pushed out a bit more or people really turning to vending volleys and cutting their graveyard hate. And then it gets a really like interesting point. The Dredge deck is very, very powerful. Games two and three are very hard after sideboard hate. That's all. Of course, on my page though, awesome addition to the deck. Heart Flame Duelist. Oh, another super exciting one. So one and a white human knight. Again, relevant creature types. Instant and sorcery spells you control have life link. Kind of that soul fire grandmaster ability, if anyone remembers that card. Three one. So it's a little fragile, but it does attack for a lot it does attack for a lot. It has this heart flame slash adventure on it. So two and a red instant. Heart flame slash deals three damage to any target. Three mana for three damage is not efficient. However, with all the upside presented here. Instant Sorcery is getting lifelink. Obviously, it's not just the slash, or, or if you just slashes, it's whatever else you're playing. This card has a ton of potential to do some pretty busted stuff. So we will see. I, as a huge fan of Soul Fire Master, and Sony played a lot of like those kind of Jessica, Jessica Black decks. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in. I'm, I'm about it. And Heart Flame Slash, it's not like the most efficient, but it is still a very solid removal spell. And to be able to hit any target and go to face is also really, really interesting. Next up. Imodane's Recruiter, two and a red for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, creature you control get plus off or so and gain haste on a turn. Uh, on the face of it is a powerful ability, um, but also has this adventure staple to it. So four and a white, straight two white night creature tokens with vigilance. So you might be thinking, Trev, why, why, are, you, why are you bringing this up? <laughs> this looks like a limited card. And the reason why uh, is this ability to give creatures you control plus one plus so and haste. 
This is actually a strict upgrade. Pretty, mm, I hate to use the word strict. It is basically a strict upgrade for the Vanifar combo deck. At the, mean, at the minute, it uses a 3-1 that you tutor up to basically give all your creatures you control haste. This lets you also buff them and give them haste, which actually increases your damage output because it's set up. Uh, if you're interested to see what that combo looks like, I've made a couple of videos on it. It's really, really long, and I, I don't want to go through it here. This video is already going to be way longer than I planned it to be. Um, so, hey, check those out. It's an upgrade. It's nice. Kellen the Feyblood. It's Tuna Red for a 2-2 with Double Strike. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen. Very interested. But it also has the adventure Birthright Boon. One in a white sorcery. Search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. This is the open the armory effect that we we, we didn't get in Shadows of the Shadow Remaster for some reason. We could tutor for hammer, or we could tutor for auras. This is kind of best of both. It does what we want to do. Kind of fits into both decks potentially, and then being a threat that you can then play with double strike, super, super powerful. I'm really excited to try Boros Hammer again with Kellen. Ooh, one of the first cards that we saw was Mosswood Dread Knight. One in the green for a 3-2 with Trample. When it dies, you can cast it from your graveyard as a venture until the end of your next turn. Dread Whispers, one in the black, you draw a card and lose a life as a sorcery. That's the adventure. Um, obviously, that is, you keep going round and round and round. It's got like infinite, again, a, a, a quote unquote infinite value. Having trample is nice, but it's a small creature. So, this is a cool card, but it actually doesn't do very much. That's the problem to me. I've seen some hype about it, I've seen um, some sacrifice stuff, and I'm going to try it there, but I think it's actually probably a little overrated at the moment. It doesn't actually impact the game that much. You're kind of spinning wheels. We'll see, we'll see. Questing Druid. One and a green for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red, put a counter on it. I am a huge lover of Quirion Dryad. It's a card that was printed in M13, which is just before Pioneer. Um, it's actually the, the deck card that I built for pre-modern when that kind of format came about. The key here is Seek the Beast. One and a red instant adventure. Exile the top two cards of your library until the, your next to end step, you may play those cards. So, you only get one turn to play these. It's your next end step, not your next turn's end step. So you have to play them the turn you cast it. But, we've seen these effects absolutely take over the Pioneer Explorer formats in the Boris Prowess deck. Really, really powerful. Being able to have both things is, is huge. It's unfortunate, it, it takes a lot for you to be able to like, cast Seek the Beast, then play the Questing Druid, and then like, play some spells to trigger it. Query and Dryad has been, you know, a bit past as far as creatures go. It's still like, hey, you can play it, start getting counters, but it is very fragile. Seek the Beast here is like a huge, powerful like, adventure effect. And so that's the reason you probably be playing it. The Questing Druid is some like, interesting upside. There's a lot of potential here. Next adventure here is Scalding Viper. So one in a red for a 2-1. Whenever an opponent casts a man spell with mana value 3 or less, Scalding Viper does 1 damage to that player. Uh, Idol of the Great Revels is a really, really powerful card in red. This is one-sided. 2 one's very fragile. But again, the thing that makes these cards is the adventure. You, like, you have a pretty decent front half with, with, with the snake, but then it also has Steam Clean. Uh, and so one in a blue sorcery, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. All right. It's sorcery speed, lots of limitations, but it is some nice utility. Is elemental as well, which is a relevant creature type potentially. I don't know if it fits into like red blue aggro. There are a lot of there's a lot of powerful cards there, and so it's contesting lots with some all stars. But keep an eye on it. Elevir of the Wild Court, two green white for a four four. Whenever Elevir of the Wild Court enters the battlefield or attacks, create a virtuous roll token attached to the target creature you control. Now, Virtuous Roll Token's pretty busted. <laughs> Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control. It's an ethereal armor kind of built in. Um, and whenever an Enchanted Creature you control does come without to play it, draw a card. Pretty strong there. Has that like um, Sixth Sense ability. Again, a curiosity style thing built into it. It is for mana, so it's quite expensive, but a really powerful enabler for like enchantment style decks. We'll see, we'll see. Is a definitely a super powerful card anyway. Back to fairies. Obira Dreaming Duelist. So blue black for a 2-2 with flash and flying. Whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. Pretty interesting tempo card. Does rely you to have another bunch of fairies. Has flash itself, so once you to put it with fairies the flash. Not sure if there's enough of them to make this actually good. You might as well it's hard to make blue black fairies better than rogues where they are right now. That'll be the challenge, I think, and well, it might just be that rogues are just going to be better. Rowan, Sign of War. One black red for a 4-2 with Menace. So actually pretty aggressively costed already and has some evasion. However, tap. 
Spells you cast this turn that are black and or red that cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you lost this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Uh, I tried a little bit trying to make like a Death Shadow style deck. There are a bunch of things you can do, whether you're shocking yourself, casting Thoughtseize, all that kind of stuff. This ability is really, really cool. It might be, hey, it's a bit too cute for Explorer and Pioneer, save for Commander, but there's a potential for some pretty powerful stuff here. That cost reduction can obviously let you power out some pretty nice things. Uh, we will see, we will see. But Rowan is a really, really cool design, and I kind of want to play with it. Ah, back to fairies. Tagwell, Duke of Splendor. So one blue black, legendary creature. It's a 2 3 with flying and death touch. No flash here, so you've got some conflicting interests. Uh, flying death touch. Uh, other, cre other fairies you control get plus one plus one, so it's a fairy lord. Okay, neat. Whenever another fairy you control dies, you draw a card and lose a life. It's three mana, which is unfortunately in Pioneer and Explorer just so much. The things you're competing for space with are really, really tough. If you have a way to give your fairies like a rattle chain style effect for fairies, maybe there's a potential, but I actually am starting to think that fairies is not going to cut it. I try some stuff and we'll see whether it works or not, but hey. Totem, Toten Tans, Swarm Piper. One black red for 2 3. Legendary creature, human warlock, bard. Whenever Toten Tans, Swarm Piper, or another non token creature control dies, Create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. This is an effect that says whenever it or another non-token creature control dies, make a creature. Which, with a bunch of like sacrifice effects, which we keep getting more support for. Uh, and we've got a bunch of zigzag port effects, effects, all that kind of stuff. Being able to just like, alright, this creature dies, like, the sacrifice your board style of deck, this effect is amazing in. Just being able to make, okay, cool, I sacrifice a creature, I replace it with a rat, drain you for some life, I sacrifice the rat, drain you for some life, sacrifice another creature, drain you for your life like a rat, sacrifice the rat. It just doubles the amount of sacrifices you have in play, um, which is super powerful. Uh, and so, Totem Tans is three mana, so competing for some with some pretty good cards, but hey, one to keep an eye on. Jun Sacrifice might be getting some buffs. Ooh, Agatha's Soul Codron. We're, we're into artifacts, which we're kind of closing to the end. Two mana, legendary artifacts. You may spend a mana as though it was mana of any color to activate the abilities of creature control. Okay, pretty interesting. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them all have... Hmm, excuse me. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Codron. Tap, exile target card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. So... You're wanting to put creatures in your graveyard with activated abilities, exile them to give the creatures that you're giving some sort of counters to all the activated abilities. Okay. There's a lot going on here. There's some ability, there's some potential for a lot of shenanigans, but you're jumping through some hoops to get there. Um, someone is going to work this out, and maybe they'll break it, or maybe it'll be not quite powerful enough. At least in Pioneer and Explorer, it could be powerful enough. It could be like pretty busted and modern, and it could be like just good enough as standard, but it might just miss uh, this format, unfortunately. We'll see, we'll see. There's a, again, I'm gonna wait for somebody else to solve it and then tell me whether it's good or not. So Ginger, the Meal Ender. Two mana, three, one. Tramble, Hexproof, and Haste if an opponent controls a Planeswalker. Okay, interesting. Oh, it, it is legendary. Legendary artifact creature, Food Knight is fantastic, by the way. Uh, the thing that I'm really interested in here, whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a counter on it and scry one. And you have two tap sacrifice to gain life with its power, kind of that food ability. Okay, neat. The ability to accumulate counters is pretty interesting. I don't know if there's enough things that you want to like, artifacts that you want to like sacrifice into your graveyard to make this like good enough. But pretty cool, pretty cool. Want to keep an eye on again. Oh, the Iron Crag. So this is a two mana mana rock. That's the first thing. It is legendary, so having multiples is an issue. But it is just a two mana mana rock that attacks for mana, which is new. <laughs> this is something new to Explore and Pioneer. We don't have like an ever flowing chalice, but it also has some other text. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield you control, you may have Iron Crag become a legendary equipment artifact named Everflame Hero's Legacy. If you do, it gains equip three and a equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and then it loses all other abilities. So it is a mana rock early. Which then later on, if you play Legendary Creature, you can have it turn into a a plus three plus three buff, taps and equips for three. It's an interesting one. You know like a Mind Stone, like you play it early and then you sacrifice it later to draw a card when you need the card advantage? Similar here, you need a Legendary Creature to trigger it, but you're like, okay, cool, yeah, now I'll make it just a buff that can sit around and play. Um, so it's a pretty cool card. We'll see, we'll see. 
Artifact players rejoice. It is if there's like enough legend legendary things that you want to play in decks that you want to put this in. If that makes sense. There's a couple of neat utility lands, but what I actually want to talk about here are the creature lands. Restless Bivouac is the first of these. So ETB tapped and then taps red and white. These are, I think, all enemy colored. I might be wrong in a second. One red white becomes a 2-2. Two, two. Okay, when it attacks, it puts a counter on a creature you control. Uh, so if it's the only creature that you have, it can put the counter on itself, and it keeps those. So next time you animate, it'll be a 2-2 with a plus one, plus one counter, etc, etc. But being able to distribute the counters to other creatures is actually pretty powerful. Um, Red-white is definitely an aggressive color combination, which obviously doesn't normally want to have land, so maybe it's not good enough there. But there's some, some interesting stuff here. Rest is Cottage. Is the green black one two black green it becomes a four four black and green horror creature when it attacks create a food token and exile card from a graveyard okay actually pretty cool getting the food is neat and it has like the same same ability as like hide the eye tyrant sure not not that original but whatever we'll deal with it restless fortress is the black white one two white black becomes a one four whenever it attacks defending player loses life you gain two life okay neat 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 restless spire is the blue red one Blue reds, this one only costs two mana to activate, jeez. It becomes a 2-1 blue and red elemental, as long as it's your turn it gets first strike. Oh, when it attacks, scry one, okay, sure. This has a lot of text on it. I guess first strike means that it doesn't just get blocked by a 1-1 one, one token, which is important. But if you have to animate for two mana, it's actually the cheapest one here, which makes it the most interesting, maybe. We'll see. Also, this art is awesome with the two dragons on the tower, nice. And then the blue green one, is five mana to activate, three green blue, becomes a five five with trample. Okay, this is really good. Whenever it attacks up to one other target creature's base power and toughness three three instead of turn. Okay, so you can buff off one of your creatures, turn your like Lana War Elf into a three three, or you can turn their big thing into a three three, and then trample over the top of it. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And that is everything. Loads of really, really awesome cards. This video is gonna be like an hour long. Uh, we'll see how it gets edited down, but Okay, I think it's worth it. Lots of cards I'm really excited to see. Cool. Uh, I do have, again, I do have an adventure video like pre Eldraine coming out this week. So I was like, let's just take a look at what we have now and then we can build upon it with the new stuff. There's a bunch of really exciting new cards that I'm excited to play with. That comes out in, I think, a week. Um, so we've got about a week, about a week to go, hopefully, from when I upload. Um, and yeah, tons of stuff to be doing. If you have any ideas, for what you want to see if you have any cards you want me to bring with if you're like oh that idea that you talked about sounds cool let me know that too and i will i'll know what to kind of like get cracking on with and prioritize on building decks and yeah i have a couple of videos coming out this week i think but not tons obviously the new set's just around the corner um and yeah if you're going to pre-release weekend good luck pc thanks for watching oh and subscribe if you're not already please i'd really really i'd really appreciate that sharing stuff yeah thanks bye